before Git Butler, which is a wonderful solution for doing rebases. You can drag commits around and all, all sorts of fancy stuff. Before Sell it harder. So I like to f <laughs> Git Butler. No! Not that hard! Oh my god! Welcome to Bits and Booze. My name is Scott Chacon. I'll be your host. I am the CEO of Git Butler. I was the co-founder of GitHub, and I happen to be a certified wine expert. So in this series, we're gonna try to shake things up a little bit. We'll be drinking some wine, we'll be talking about wine, and we'll be learning about Git Reset. So we're gonna be looking at what does Git Reset do? What was it meant to do? How do we use it uh, in a way that doesn't scare you? Um, so hopefully you'll come out of this being a Git Reset expert, figuring out how to use it to manipulate your working directory versus your index versus the head. So let's get started. Boom goes the voov. On a scale of one to ten, yes. where do you where do you feel you are on Git Reset? On a scale of how do zero you feel? to ten, yes, I would put. Why my do you have to change it from a one to a zero? I'm not a Lua programmer. Ah, okay, you're a Java guy. It's fine. Zero to nine. Zero to nine. One I would digit. say I am a a solid five. You're five. Okay, yeah. you're right in the middle. I feel like what do you? I mean, the average for reset I feel is quite low. Right? Really? Like I, feel, I, I feel like people are really, uh, like, they, they don't like Reset. They don't know what Reset does. Or... This is surprising to me because yeah. Reset is a main part of my workflow. We're going to go over some Reset stuff. But first, a word from our sponsor. A word from our sponsor? We don't really have sponsors, but we do have wine. If uh, anybody out there is a wine producer and wants to sponsor us and send up uh, some wine, I'm happy to review it. Today we have Vauve Clicquot. Now, uh, Vauve Clicquot is not a sponsor because no. they don't need sponsorship. Everybody knows Vauve Clicquot. It's very overpriced. Uh, it tastes fine. Um, they're they're definitely not going to sponsor us now. Uh, do you know what Vauve Clicquot is, is? Do you know what it means? To be honest, I've never tried it. You've never tried it? Um, I'm an uneducated fellow. I feel like every episode we do, we're talking about French. Uh, yes. This is again a French wine. Well, it's got it's a French be, name. But do you know be... what Vauve means in French? Uh, Vauve. Kind of like American Vogue, but posher. Nope. 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 There's a V in there. Uh, it means it means widow. Oh. So it's a single person wine. It is it is a it is a single person. For drinking wine. alone. Vauve Clicquot is the widow Clicquot. This is this is uh, what the brand was named after this woman who who ran this in the 1800s, actually the time of Napoleon III. Oh, and wow. you can see her her visage. Oh wow. On the on the cap there. Oh, yeah. That is the widow Clicquot. And her husband yeah. died young, right. left her this wine winery, she and she was a launch that. You launch marketing it. genius. Now, oh shit. <laughs> Solid four and a half out of ten. What you don't do when you're serving uh, to a group in a sophisticated manner is that. Right. However, it's hilarious. It is incredibly funny. So though I was trained not to do it, definitely do it every time. I'll tell you a trick to buying good champagne. Right. Um, the trick is you look for the word champagne on it because then it's made in the champagne region. Yeah, right? It has that's, to be because there's like the... legal definitions of that. Right. So otherwise it's a sparkling white wine as the joke yeah. goes. Um, but what you don't want to do is recognize the label because if you recognize the label, right. then you're paying for PR. Right. You're paying so for the brand. If you see a bottle that is, you know, 50 euros or something, yeah. and you see another bottle that's 50 euros and you recognize the brand on one and you do not recognize the brand on the other, yeah then get the one you don't recognize the brand on because most likely the money went into making and growing yeah. the wine um, rather than right. the, the marketing. What, so, what do you use Reset for? So I use Reset whenever I want to pull latest changes into a branch. So let's say that I have a main branch on my local computer yeah. and there have been more changes upstream. Uh, I see a lot of people do sort of like a git merge origin master uh, dash dash fast forward um, but my, my approach is often to um, switch to the main branch, then fetch the remote, and then do a git reset, dash dash hard, origin main, and then I know for certain that there's no bullshit going on. I have my local main branch that is equivalent to the remote main right. branch. So you're doing hard to say, stop what I was doing, yeah. just go to this other point. Yeah. I okay. don't want any discrepancy between my local main and my remote main. Okay, there's softer ways of using this. What Reset cares about is your last commit, your next commit, and what could be your next commit, right? right? So what head points to, what your index looks like, and what your working directory looks like. Yeah. Those are the only three things it really cares about. And so what we should do 
is let's set up, you have a clean working directory, get, run git status. So I'll run git status. Oh, damn it. You do not have a clean working directory. Okay, but that's, that's perfect. So let's do two things. Let's run git add qux. So git add qx, so yep. that's the name of the yep. so file that takes that I've... something that's in your working directory that's not in your index, right? It's untracked. Yep. Let's go ahead and add that. So we've done git add. Yep. And now let's modify a file in your working directory. Okay. Vim, uh, do you want to do an existing file or something else? Do an existing file. So uh, out of my existing files, I'll let's pick do beef. The, the beef file. Yeah. Or French, où est le bouffe? Um, okay. Beef let's... <laughs> Why is there so much French in these episodes? Okay. I mean, you're the so guy modify it. Into modify the... it. Oh, fuck you. Throw Boof in there. So we've got Boof. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. So now, yeah. now we have three trees. We have the last commit, what head, the tree that head points to. So yep. let's do, let's do git ls tree. Git ls tree. Head. Head. <laughs> you asshole. <laughs> now. Let's do git ls files. So git ls. Have you, have you ever run this before? No. Oh, I've not done something ls new. tree, ls files, or rev pass. ls files. So ls files, just that? Mm -hmm. Nothing more? Nope. Would git ls, I mean, we can already see it here, right? In head, we have bar, baz, beef, dead, and foo, right? Right. In ls files, we also have qux. The, the Quax file that I because wrote you added because it. it's a new file. Because you, you run you ran git add, right? Yeah. And so when you run git status, actually actually run git status. Sure. Okay. So when you run git status, what it's gonna do is it's gonna look at all three of these trees. It's gonna right. look at the last commit you have. So yeah. so this LS tree head, right? So this it's this gonna look up here. at this LS files output, essentially. It's gonna yeah. look at what does your index look like. And so that says QUX, right? Yeah. And it's going to look at your working directory in right. which you've modified beef. Yeah. And so, so this is stuff that Git does not have a sort of track on yet. Right. We're not told Git to add it to it anything or. It, it, it's not that it, it's not tracking it. What it's what it's doing is it's just doing a diff between these three things, right? So it's doing right. a diff. The diff between your last commit and your index is yeah. going to show up in blue here, right? Yeah. This is the. the so this is changes to be committed, right? Yeah. It could be a new file. It could be modified. It doesn't really matter, right? Yeah. It's just saying. In this section, this is the difference between your last commit and your next commit, your your head and your index. Yeah. And then in in orange under changes not stage for commit, it's going to show you what's the difference between your index and your working directory because we modified yep. a file, right? Now, you can run this thing that it says here to unstage it. You can say git restore dash dash stage. Right? Yeah. The other thing you can do do git reset dash dash uh, the, just do git reset. So I'm going to run. And then run git status again. Git reset. And then git status. Right. So now, what has happened? Right. So you, run git reset. And it's told us that the B file that we've written. So what happened? It's been reset. Right. It's been unstaged. It's right. been unstaged. So, so essentially in this case, git reset does the opposite of git add. Right. Because what it does is it takes the head and it does git reset is is the same as re, git reset mixed, which is saying take the head and make the index look like that, right? So right. whatever your make whatever your last commit, make that look like your next commit. So it kind of undoes it. Right. If that makes sense. Yeah. So Whereas git the, add yeah. does says take stuff that's in my working directory and make it my next commit. Git reset yeah. takes what was your last commit and make it my next commit. Yeah. So you can think about reset in a, in its normal stage as sort of the, as an undo of an add. Right. So you yeah. can do yeah. git add star, the opposite is git reset. Right. right? It, it just undoes, says, actually just undo yeah. all the adds. Just just make whatever my last commit is be my next commit, which means right. git status should should essentially show a bunch of, you know, un unstaged stuff, right? Yeah. Um, so that's, that's one way of using git reset. Yes. Um, the other thing that you can do with git reset is to do soft. So soft, soft reset, essentially does not touch the index right. and it does not touch the working directory. All it does is change what your last commit points to. Right. And so this is a really nice thing. If you let's let's go ahead and, and commit. So right? so get 
Gitstatsu is a different way of doing that. <laughs> yep. But definitely. So I'm going to git add So so yeah, everything. add everything. So git add dot commit is add everything everything right. to my index and then say git commit. Yep. I'm going to commit everything. Commit everything. Wonderful commit message. That's a great commit message. It's similar to what I do most of the time. Yep. So let's so, undo this commit, right? So, so we've the, made the, a commit here. So, the other nice, do... so one is undoing git add, yeah. which is sort of the default yeah. method that git, git reset does, right? Yeah. You can do git reset, it undoes all your ads. You can do git reset in a path name, it just undoes that ad, yeah. right? Yeah. So the, find... next, the next thing that it does, or that you can make it do that is even less obtrusive is git reset dash dash soft. Yeah. And what dash dash soft does is it, again, it doesn't touch the index, it doesn't touch the working directory, it just changes what head is pointing to, right? right. So, so shall we take a look at sort of the git log? Yeah, let's look at, let's and look then at what it looks sort like. Of what this commit is doing, exactly. so then we can see what it's going to undo. So if I do git log, yeah. we can see we've got this uh, wonderful commit that right. we just wrote. Right, the one with the pseudo yeah. swear words. The pseudo swear words. Right. Uh, and then if I say git show, we should have gotten a whole bottle of this, by the way. Um, so when I run git show, it shows us that we've sort of added these lines right. to the B file, and it shows us that we introduced this Quax file here. <clears throat> right. Right. So let's undo this commit. Um, reset. Remove the swear words. The way you do it is reset dash dash soft. Right. So you so do git. git reset dash dash soft. Soft. And then and then head tilde. Head. Or Totally. Whatever, whatever. I mean, if you know the one you want to go back to, you can do yeah. it. You can undo three commits or four commits or whatever, right? right? You say, here's where I want to put yeah. what Git thinks my last commit was, yeah. right? And that's all it does. It just changes yeah. sort of the head reference, the last commit yeah. reference. So in so, this sort of list of all the commits, so you can, Git tilde is yeah, specifying this one here. Tilde, in this case, you can highlight it. It specifies DB2. It's, it's the parent. OK. Yeah, it's the one before. So I'm saying what I want to pretend my last commit. So right now, oh, Ed is okay. saying this is what my last commit was. Our last was. commit is this one. Right. But what I want to say is let's pretend my last commit was this one, right. but not change okay. my index, what right. my next commit is. So we're not changing any files in our working directory. Not change any files in working, not change any files that are staged, right? Like that are yeah. that is my next commit, which is what the index is. So let's do, yeah. I mean, soft. Head tilde, or you can put you can put the SHA, right, if you right. want, right? But it, so it, it's, the, it's so, the same thing. Yeah, so do head tilde. So do that, yeah. So and it's then going run, back in time by one commit. Right. But again, not, so so run get status. It should it should show kind of what we saw before. Um, but but the thing is, is that it didn't touch the index, right? Right. So it's going to make the index look like whatever the last commit tree was, whatever the last commit that you, you yeah. did was. Yeah. Um, so this is sort of the and anything in your, of, if you had uncommitted yeah. stuff and you're working if you had only done a patch add or if you would only added a couple files and committed them or something it it leave those in the index it would leave your working directory looking like whatever it looks like yep. and it would just change its concept of whatever the last commit that you had done was yeah and so and I is, find this actually really nice right yeah you can you can essentially say I want to move my last commit with soft. Yeah. I want to move my last commit and my staging area yeah. with mixed, which is kind of what it normally does. Yeah. Or I want to move everything with yeah. the next thing that we're going to do, which is hard. Yeah. So right? this is this is quite nice because I think something that I do a lot in my workflow is I'll make a commit and then I'll want to change that commit. So what I'll do is then I'll go make some more changes in my editor and then run sort of git commit amend and then sort of amend the previous commit. But what I could do instead is do a soft reset to the previous commit right. and then make Redo my changes it. and then make another commit, which is my new commit that incorporates those changes. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. A, a reset soft to head tilde undoes yeah. it. But if you've done three commits yeah. and you want to say, you know what? Go back and let me redo these three commits as two commits or as five yeah. commits or whatever. You can say just soft reset back to this. Yeah. That now I've rewound in time to that was my last commit, and my index is still set up and my staging area is still set up, and I can just re like I and then I can even reset stuff out of my index if I want to, right? And like re re add things, restage things, recommit things, yeah. um, and and change it how I how I want to how, how yeah. I want to change it. You can um, sort of tell the history that you want to tell. So the last the last thing that we haven't talked about is is what most and what you started out with this yeah. is is dash dash hard, which right. is it does it does all of these changes, right? Yeah. So you're saying I want to set I want to set 
the, the head reference, the, my last commit to this, and my index to this, and my working directory to this. Right. So, so just, it, just wipe out everything, just pretend like whatever branch I'm on was always all of these things. Yeah. If you're comfortable with this, it really lets you manipulate Git in a nice way that, yeah. that you can feel comfortable with. If you're scared of it, then then it's just magic yeah. incantations of it just fucks up things yeah. here and there, right? And so you really don't want it to be that. So right. Shall we do a hard reset to show them what it's like? Yeah, yeah. Fuck these files. <laughs> <laughs> just hard reset. Yeah. So if we do a git log, my sort of current commit is this. Okay, so let's run that. Git log so log. Git log. You already did it. But... Log. Okay, so we have this thing. What are we trying to show here? So Resetting. With like looking, a hard reset. Yep. So we've got some changes in our index, and we might want to choose one of these commits to sort of go back right. in so, time to. So, I mean, this is a good, so head is that merge branch, right? Yeah. Let's, let's create a new branch, right. and then go back to foo commit. So I'm going to create a... So like switch dash C... <laughs> Foo. Switch dash C foo branch. And then, yeah. And then hard commit to or hard reset to 72D. So yeah, hard, let's, let's just move it all the way to the bottom. Hard reset. Undo everything. To everything. So we're gonna yeah, go yeah. back to sort of this commit here. Exactly. So git reset hard and then this commit yeah. here. Boom. And if now, I do now log log. So if I do let's look at what it looks like now. Log log. So now, and if you if you list, like just look at the files in your. There's almost yep. no files in your working directory at this point, right? So we do ls la. Yeah, it's just foo. Right? Just like it took out everything. Here. It took out everything. Yeah. Took out everything in your. Like if you run git status, it's clean. Yeah. Like everything, your working directory, your last commit, uh, your index, they all look exactly the same, which yeah. is which is this first commit you ever did. Yeah. Um, so it, it just undid everything. Um, so it's a fun blow away sort of sort of yeah. Command. It's a really powerful tool yeah. to sort of just put you back in time if you made mistakes, or even if you. But again, sort hard, of hard is the hammer, right? It's best. Hammer. Mixed is is cool and soft is interesting. Like yeah. you just you just have to know what it what it's manipulating. Yeah. It's manipulating head. It's manipulating head and index. It's manipulating head and index and working directory. Yeah. So that's soft, mixed, and hard. Yeah. And mixed is the default. Thank you very much for joining us on Bits and Booze. This has been Caleb. This has been Scott. This has been Get Butler. Uh, I hope you learned something about Reset and you know, possibly something about uh, Champagne. Um, join us for our next episode. Smash the subscribe button. I really want to do Hit that the time. like button. No, that's not, that's not a thing in YouTube. You yes, don't do is. a like button. Yes, there is. Oh, there's like. It's, oh, you're, it's thumbs up. No, it's a like button. I thought it was a thumbs up, thumbs no, down. No, that's Facebook. No, I think it's on YouTube too. No, it's it's a Let's thumbs up. Let's throw in a screenshot right here to see who's right. It's a thumbs up. I think it's a, no, okay. No. Anyways, you can do a thumbs up if you want to, but definitely. He's an old person. He's not moved on from MySpace oh, yet. <laughs>